Hello and welcome to the Everything is Black and White podcast. I hope you guys are doing well. Andrew Musgrove here and we're going to bring you an additional episode this week. Before we do, hit thumbs up on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and give us a rating and review if you're listening on the audio channel. Thank you as always. Today's subject is Kieran Trippier and the future of Newcastle United's former team captain at the club. Do you want to see him stay? Do you want to see him sold in the next seven days that remain of the transfer window? It is a topic that has split the fan base. It's pretty much 50-50. You've got people who want to keep him because of his experience and leadership. You've got people who want to keep him because they still think he's ahead of Tino Livermento in the pecking order. And you've got the other side who want to see him sold because of his age, because of his poor form in stages of last season. And now is just the time to cash in on the full back. We'll do a quick roundup before we get into the actual full debate. Last 72 hours or so, you've had various reports from a national scale that uh, Kieran Trippier wants to leave Newcastle United. You've had Everton and Galatasaray, West Ham, a few other clubs as well across Europe. But are they genuinely interested in Kieran Trippier? Well, that remains to be seen. And what of the man himself? Does he want to leave Newcastle United? Those reports stated sources. Of course, Trippier hasn't come out and said anything. Eddie Howe has. It was his pre Bournemouth press conference today. And of course, it was dominated by Kieran Trippier's future. Should we read a few quotes from uh, Eddie Howe, which will set the tone nicely for this video? I think that's exactly what we'll do. It was the first question that he was asked in the press conference. And he said, the situation is business as usual. Trippier has trained really well this week. I'm surprised by a lot of the stories that have come out. He's a valuable member of the squad. His professionalism has been first class. And then he was asked uh, later on in the press conference, about him, about Kim Trippier remaining a Newcastle United player in this transfer window by the time it closes next Friday, Friday, August the 30th. And he said, my wish is Kieran stays here and continues to play for us, but I can never answer with absolute certainty because it's football and the window is always unpredictable. We take every case individually and try to make the right decision. You couldn't get clearer than what I always said there. My wish is Kieran stays here and continues to play for us. That is Eddie Howe being as clear as as day. You know, he wants Kieran Trippier to stop at Newcastle United. I guess it comes down to his first team future, doesn't it? I think that's what Kieran Trippier will be asking Eddie Howe. Am I first choice right back or not? Is Tina Livermento ahead of me in the pecking order? Now, Tina Livermento, of course, started against Southampton. And I think many people took that as a nod that Kieran Trippier was on his way out. But actually, on reflection, I'm not too sure. Now, you guys will know if you've listened and watched this podcast religiously, I've been banging the drum for Tino Levermento to be Newcastle United's first choice right back for months. I made that prediction this time last year that he would be. And I was happy to have been proved right that he started against Southampton because I think he's earned it. I think he's shown he is the player for now. But one of the other quotes from Eddie Howe's press conference has left me wondering, did he pick Tina Livermento because he fancies Tina Livermento as first choice? Or did he pick Tina Livermento because he didn't feel Kieran Trippier was fit enough? Now, he did say today in his press conference that Kieran Trippier, he's trained really well since he's come back from the Euros. I think he's only had two weeks of training, hence the reason why he didn't start last week. He's preparing, as we all are, for the game on Saturday. Now, look, that could be taken in many different ways. It could be taken as Eddie Howe just, you know, praising Trippier. He's trained really well. But I take that as Eddie Howe laying the groundwork for him to maybe return to the starting eleven against Bournemouth. I'm going to say here right now, I would not be surprised if Kevin Trippier started against Bournemouth on Sunday. I think the line there, he's only had two weeks of training, hence the reason why he didn't start last week. So he's not saying... Livermento start because he's first choice right back. He's saying Kieran Trippier didn't start because he's not fit. And for me, again, reading between the lines, interpreting it in my own opinion, that that suggests Kieran Trippier is still his first choice right back. We'll know more, I think, on Sunday when the team news drops. But don't be surprised if Kieran Trippier is back in that starting eleven. And if he is, I think that pretty much puts to bed the debate about Kieran Trippier's future. I think that means he would stop until at least January. 
if not the summer and beyond. And also, of course, the news that emerged this week was that Kieran Trippier's deal actually runs until the summer of 2026. I, like many of you, were under the impression that it ended in summer of 2025, which made the whole debate about Kieran Trippier's future a little bit easier to come to a decision. You know, if someone came in with a decent bit of 10 million with his deal ending next summer, I was cashing in all day long, you know. You get him his wages off the books. You get a little bit of money for him before his deal runs out and you lose him on a free and you put that towards investing elsewhere. With two years left on his deal, people would argue, well, actually, you've got to go after a bit more. But what is a realistic price tag on Kieran Trippier? You know, you're not going to get 20 million for him. I think the highest you could possibly get is maybe 15. I think 12 is a more realistic amount. And I think if you are getting anywhere between 10 and 12 in the next seven days, I would still be cashing in. I think that's a good bit of money to cash cash in on. And I think that helps reinvest it into the squad. And look, he's got a whole lot to offer Newcastle. If he stays, I'm not complaining. If he goes, I think great. They've earned a bit of money on him. They've made a bit, well, they haven't made a bit of money on him, but they've, they've bought a bit of money into their wallet and they can spend that hopefully in the remaining days of the transfer window, or if not in the next week, then in January. Um, I still think they should have cashed in this January when they had uh, Bayern Munich around the table. But, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Of course, Eddie Howe didn't want to lose his leadership and experience back then, and that's why he doesn't want to lose now. You know, OK, he might not be captain on the pitch, but what he brings to a dressing room is is invaluable, especially in what is going to be such a tough season for Newcastle United, such an important season for Eddie Howe in charge of this club because the aim has to be top four football and Eddie Howe, and uh, Kieran Trippier can bring a wealth of experience to that challenge. I guess the other question, though, is if Tina Livermento is the first choice right back, will Kieran Trippier stay and accept that? Will he be respectful? with that decision you would like to think so you know since he signed from Atletico Madrid he's been nothing but professional he hasn't kicked up a fuss he hasn't caused any problems I mean he has been playing week in week out um and you would like to think that would continue like it did with Jamal Lascelles who found himself from being first choice to not being first choice but his attitude was absolutely spot on he remained a leader off the pitch he remained that figurehead and he did not cause any trouble. And you have to hope that Kieran Trippier would follow the same suit. And there's no reason to think he wouldn't do. I think the only thing that makes you think mm, would be his desire for first-team football. And I think, really, he has to get answers in the next few days. And if it's not answers that he, that he that, that, if it's not the answer he wants, i.e. you're not guaranteed first-team football, then he might push for a move. Is Eddie Howe going to give him any guarantees? I don't think Eddie Howe is that kind of manager. Uh, so I know Kieran Trippier might have to take a gamble, but it's certainly going to be an interesting one. It is. Um, I think Team Livermento, as I said, first choice right back for me, but is he first choice right back for you? And Eddie Howe, let me know in the comments. And I guess the other thing that comes into this as well is do Newcastle United have enough at right back to not suffer should Kieran Trippier leave in the next few days? They've got Team Livermento, they've got Emil Kraft. Harrison Ashby at a push. Is that enough to get you through to January where you can sign another right back? I'm not too certain that they do. However, again, if someone's offering a decent amount of money for Kieran Trippier, you, you know, there's a balance, isn't there? He, you know, you're betting on Tian Livermento in that instance remaining fit. Emil Kraft, I think, is a solid enough squad player, but you've got to think as well for the next three weeks, he'll likely be playing at right side at centre back to a place Fabian Chair. And you know, you're really praying that you don't have any injuries in those three weeks, especially if Kieran Trippier goes. Once Chair's back, you have Livermento and Kraft both have suffered injuries in recent years as well. So you've got to take that into account. It would be a gamble. There's no there's no bones about it. It would be a gamble. And I can totally understand why some people say, look, it's not worth the risk of selling Kieran Trippier, not only because you lose the experience and the leadership, but also they haven't got enough in reserve should Tino Livermento get injured. You know, where do you rate Emil Kraft from 1 to 10 in terms of ability? Some would probably harshly, I think, put it maybe at five or six. I rate him a little bit higher. But yes, you know, he's not, he's not a top class right back. I love him a bit, but he's not a top class right back, so I can understand the opinion of some. Um, and again, another thing that comes into it is it's all good putting 
10, 15 million pounds down for Kieran Trippier, but are there teams out there who can match his wage? You know, I'm talking about getting his wage off the books, one of the highest earners at the club. But who's out there to match that? Is he going to take a pay cut to go elsewhere if it's guaranteed in first team football in the Premier League? Maybe, but that's totally up to him. If he still thinks he's got a lot to offer at the highest level, which I definitely think he does, is he going to take a pay cut? Not many players would do. Not many players would do. It would have to be the right move. Um, so it's going to be very interesting. I mean, look, on the pitch, he had a great Euros uh, for England. He filled in at left back. Obviously not his first choice position, but he did a good enough job. I don't think he let anyone down. Uh, last season, despite being hit by injuries, he got 10 assists. You know What he provides going forward is invaluable to Newcastle United. Has he lost a yard or two a pace? Yes, yes. But, you know, that's just with age. Um but I still think he's a, he's a very good Premier League uh, uh, right back, very good Premier League full back, and still has a lot to offer Newcastle United if indeed Eddie Howe does turn back to him um, ahead of Tino Livermento. So I think in many ways it's it's kind of a win win for Newcastle United. If they sell him, raise a bit of cash, fantastic. If they keep him and he's first choice, they'll be happy. If they keep him and he's not first choice and he doesn't kick up a fuss, then they've got someone who's good leadership and good experience. Now, I asked you guys on Twitter about the future of Kieran Trippier and if someone came in with a decent amount of money in the next few days before the window shuts on August 30th, would you sell them? Uh, 20 replies, and it's fair to say the majority are split. I'm going to read through some of them and then we'll talk about the responses. Ben says they'd keep uh, to replace them uh, and the speed we conduct, conduct, conduct transfer business these days, we'd not get anything done. So I'd rather keep them and sell others. I think he meant they'd struggle to replace him. Uh, ben, obviously not happy with the window so far as it goes into its final seven days. Paul says, don't want to keep a player that doesn't want to be here. Either loan him out. Uh, he has two years left or find someone willing to pay enough so we get something out of it for a 34-year-old with two years left on his contract. If he doesn't go, then don't involve him if he doesn't want to leave. It has to be said that there's no... Confirmation, there's nothing on record that Trippi has asked to leave. I think anyhow, in his press conference today, said he hadn't asked to leave either. So obviously, anyhow, is not going to come out and say he has asked to leave, you know, because that shows your hand to potential buying clubs. But um, he's not going to go out on loan um, because well, why would he? Unless you get a decent loan fee, it doesn't benefit Newcastle United to send them out on loan because they still have to pay a decent chunk of his wage, you would imagine. And, you know, if we're asking what a decent transfer fee is, what is a decent loan fee? So I think you can rule out a loan deal. Uh, Newcastle fan in the US is, if he's expressed a desire to leave, then let him leave if a decent bid comes in. If he wants to stay, keep him unless it's a big offer. Harry says, I suppose anything over 10 million is too much to turn down, really. Uh, but that's from a financial point of view. From a footballing point of view, you keep him as long as possible. Christopher says, from a attacking point of view, he is head and shoulders above Livermento for me. I don't fully trust Livermento's placement too. I'd keep Trippier every day of the week. David says, not unless we get decent money, which for him is 8 to 10 million, and then we'd need a replacement. Dom says, for the long-term benefit, the club sell. Over 11 million in wages cleared. Eric says, sell. He'll be 34 soon, and his performances have been declining for a while now. I would love to keep him, but in a PSR-driven world, the harsh reality is, but it makes sense to sell. Uh, HRH says, I would want to keep him and persuade him to become part of the coaching staff when he retires. But if he wants to go for whatever reason, I would grant him his wish. Uh, we've got Sir Jason Toon says, it's too late now in the window. You've got to keep him. Uh, Willsey says, tough one, as we will need to bring in someone to replace him. If he wants to go, though, 10 to 15 million pounds is a decent price. Alan says, you need the experience and good attitude around the place. Uh, David says we should keep it would have to be a £20 million bid for David to sell him James says he has to be kept Daniel says we need the replacement or there's no point getting rid uh, Dodd says keep him selling Trippier and replacing him with Kraft the travesty Dodds, that's very harsh on uh, Emil Kraft and Annie says keep him unless silly money so actually I said it was split you have got the majority there though saying to keep him. Jaro Mag says, great if we can get anything over 10 million from him. Appreciate everything he's done for us, but he's 33 and hasn't looked his best towards the end of last season. So the majority saying keep him, I think more because of the time to get any replacement. And again, the depth's not there to just kind of sell him on um, without any worry about replacing him. 
if you sin, sell him for a decent amount of money that comes in, 10 to kind of 15 million pounds. Is anyone going to pay that? I'm not too sure. Look, he has been a fantastic servant for Newcastle United. He was the first big name through the door. His move turned heads. It was the catalyst. It no doubt played a part in some of the, the stars that we've got here at Newcastle United now looking to join Newcastle United. You know, the likes of Bruno, the likes of Botman. You've got, you know, that well, that sacrifice that he made, you know, leaving a club like Atletico Madrid, the Champions League club, to come to Newcastle United in a relegation battle will never be forgotten. He's been a fantastic servant. He's put his heart and soul into his two and a half years here at Newcastle United. But, you know, there isn't a viewpoint that time catches up with every man. Certain performances last season, you know, were well below his level. Was that just a mixture of, you know, injuries having an impact, you know, having an off day, players have off days, or was that a sign that maybe his level has dropped? You know, we'll only know that by him playing week in, week out, but we remember the Chelsea game, we remember the Everton game, you know, and other moments where he just didn't look his usual self. Whether that is something that is long-term and now kind of part of his game, we'll never know. Like I said, the Euros, he did okay, but it's just whether now is time to move on, I suppose, you know, if he did move on, his legacy would be intact. You know, he would be well remembered every time he returned to St. James's Park for being that first big name to come, for setting the standard in terms of training and attitude and just quality on the pitch. You know, he's been unbelievable. Uh, you know, a, a proper leader, Freddie Howe, a proper uh, man in the trenches for the gaffer. But, you know, it, it, Good things have to come to an end. And my personal opinion, if they can get anywhere between 12 and 15 million for Kieran Trippier, even without really having the depth there, I think you've got enough ooh, just to get a January. You know, you're betting on Tina Livermento not to get injured. And it would be a gamble, as I've said. But I think anywhere between 12 and 15 million would be too good of a deal to turn down in a world as quite a few people said in the comments there, where PSR is king and every penny counts. And you never know, they might be able to get a sneaky loan deal in at right back, just to offer some cover. It's an interesting one. I can see both sides of the story, um, of the argument. I can see why, why Ali Howe wants to keep them, but also I can see why some fans um, want to cash in. And, and, and from my point of view, as a fan, I would, I would look to cash in if the offer was there. But it'll come down to being the right offer, It'll come down to Kieran Trippier's desire for first-team football and whether he can get that answer before the transfer window closes. And I actually think you're looking at the next few days. You don't want to be getting to Wednesday or Thursday and suddenly Trippier knocking on the door and saying, I want to go now because that wouldn't give you time to spend the money. It certainly wouldn't give you time to find a replacement, I don't think, of any real quality. I think you want this done and dusted within the next kind of 72 hours by Monday at the latest and you'll know that Kieran Trippier is here until at least January. It's an interesting one. Let me know in the comments what you think. Always love to hear from you guys. Give the video a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys very soon.